and then let me go to YouTube because I got less than a minute. Oh, that was a good one, by the way. Nice. Um, this is 27, correct? Episode 27. I always ask yes. this because I'm too dumb to too too dumb to check before. Come on, you Mark, stupid. That's your damn. job to keep track of everybody's episodes. Yeah, it's 27. Yes. Come on, you stupid computer. All right, my oh work my here God. is done. Yeah, right. <laughs> <laughs> Come on. Hey, Mark, is that really the aviator helmet that gives you that good audio? Yeah. It's got to be in the headsets. Yeah. It's not the helmet. No, no. I mean, the shell is irrelevant. As I said, I use a carved out pumpkin for my helmet. <laughs> but, uh, I saw that. What, what radios are those? Well, I mean, I'm just using a Bofang for my two meter stuff. No, but what headset is doing the noise oh, cancellation? I don't know. It's it's all uh, like unmarked. Right. Yeah. Unmarked. So what he using. said unmarked. Yeah, marks. What's your name? Unmarked. <laughs> <laughs> Here we go, guys. We're we're setting up the meeting to live YouTube. It's on. Here we go, guys. Welcome to Tuesday Night Hangout. I am your host, Shane, with uh, Never Trust a Skinny Chef Shane and ppgshane.com. Tonight we are, um, uh oh, hold on. Okay, sorry. This whole start of the show thing I still haven't got used to. I'm not a professional like Jade by no means. Um, oh man, we got a whole bunch of people joining in here. Hold on. <laughs> Okay, um, tonight we're going to discuss Dave Purden's. Um, I am super excited about it. Actually, I have a couple things we want to discuss tonight. Dave Purden's being one of them. Um, I know they say we can't show up early. I'm a little nervous about that. Um, I actually have a way around that, by the way. Um, my wife's cousin lives um, I think about an hour, if not an hour and a half away from there. So I'm actually leaving Saturday morning here from Florida and I will be in Ohio by, um, the afternoon. I'm planning on flying Sunday morning from my, my, uh, wife's cousin's house all week, all weekend and then all week, um, until Dave Burns. And then I will be there, uh, first thing, I believe Thursday morning, uh, I know Mark uh, McElroy is planning on uh, showing up a little early with me at the uh, wife's cousin's house. Um, Jade and Eric, you guys aren't going, correct? Or if so, it's going to be late? Uh, no, I don't think we're going to be able to make it. Um, so if anybody does want to go and did not make the ticket cutoff, they could definitely uh, use our tickets that are already paid for. Wow, at a at a cut uh, at a cutthroat price of oh Shane when you get there how much were the tickets? They were forty dollars <laughs> a piece, and I will sell them for eighty dollars a piece now. Hmm. Where can you find that? Actually, uh, McElroy, uh, <laughs> uh, did you figure out your stuff with your email that you got? Did you? Yeah. Um, yeah, I, I finally got that. it straightened out. I got it straightened out with Amy. Okay. And I believe that right. that flying that flying starts Friday, I believe, the third, oh. third through Monday. I don't Not know. Thursday. I don't believe so. Doesn't anybody have a job? I, <laughs> um, I do. My job is. To Go to as many fly-ins as I can, and while I'm not, well, while I'm at work, I work as much overtime and turn it to comp time, so I have time off work. That's the game plan. Hey, um, I just, DP, I just want to point something out. If uh, everybody right now could look at Will, he's eating again. It's dinner time. I think most of America is eating right now. <laughs> Dude, whatever. <laughs> Yeah, it's eight o'clock. I don't know. Dinner started at five. It's now eight. Who eats at five o'clock, man? Uh, Old people. Like, 
<laughs> okay. Hey, let me guys, ask. Uh, can you guys hold on? Uh, I can't even see me right now. We Zoom can't see is, you either. I know. Okay, so help me here because Zoom said you need to update. So I hit the update button and now this crap's going on. So tell me what I need to do. Do I need to turn this off and reboot it? Uh, help me, please. Well, first off, I think your ceiling fan's turning in the wrong direction. I, know. <laughs> I don't want to. I can't see me. And I know you guys can hear me like I'm in some kind of a, you know, one of those interviews and they don't want to see your face kind of thing because you killed somebody. Um, so, Linda, 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 listen, Linda, turn okay. or lower your volume or, or, or your voice because you are scream yelling into the microphone unknowingly <laughs> and, and then pull your camera better? down a little bit is that better yes, pull your camera down. i yes. can't i mean i don't know what's going on with my screen so i'm gonna leave this for a minute and maybe reboot it right. and see what's going on all right if you're nice later i will let you in later in the, oh in thank the you love you shaney yeah okay <laughs> <laughs> this sucks. all what right okay goodbye all right I'm leaving. Goodbye. Goodbye, everybody. I'm leaving. Goodbye. Bye, Linda. <laughs> um, DP and or JP Tulo, TikTok Tulo, better known as. Um, I know uh, JP's heading to um, Dave Purden's. Uh, DP, are you going to Dave Purden's? I don't remember if you said you were or were not. Nick Griffith, you going to um, Dave Purden's? Who in the chat is going to Dave Purdens? How about that? Because I am so flipping excited. This is my by far favorite fly in. Um, it is to me, it's just oh, good lord. I just thought it was so beautiful. The air was amazing, which I was told afterwards multiple, multiple times by multiple different people. The air was not normally like that. I'm guessing it was more like moonshiners which i mean i flew midday first thing in the morning afternoon you name it if i decided to go fly i just grabbed my wing and took off um i didn't have one issue actually i think i did my very first uh midday flight with jp and uh jason russell smith and smart car brian so Dude, yeah that well, is no small thing what you just said there you're saying the air is not normally like it was when you experienced it last. It's more like moonshiners? Correct. Is what I was told. But from my experience, it has been, it was any given time, it was literally butter air smooth. I never, I had never reversed launch because I didn't have the chance because the air was no more than three, four miles an hour. It was on any given day that we were there. So I don't, I'm hoping it's just like that again, but it was absolutely amazing when I was there last year. Okay, well, if it's like Moonshiners, I'm going to personally blame you the whole time I'm there. I Listen, uh, I don't blame you, but <laughs> I just, this, this is, I'm telling you right now. So I've been to two Swanee fly-ins. I've been to Georgia. I've been to Tennessee. I've been to Vail, North Carolina. Um, there, there might have been another one in there somewhere. Georgia. Anyways, yes, that's uh, bad apples, right? Oh yeah. This is by far my most favorite place to fly. It's the furthest that I have I've ever drove to go to a fly-in, but it's by far the, the greatest fly-in that um, I've been to. The area is absolutely gorgeous. You can fly over the Ohio, the Ohio River, go right to um, Kentucky. And, uh, I mean, they've got a, a dirt oval track there that they tell you not to fly into, but you can fly over it. It looks pretty cool. Um, they actually have this, like, bridge that goes over the Ohio River, and there's campers parked underneath the bridge, kind of like in the shade, if you will. I guess the it's for the racetrack. The uh, um, what do we got? Uh, the uh, job mess they don't have any facilities there right 
That's it's what I James. like about moonshiners, showers, water, and bathrooms. Okay. So last year they brought in porta potties. Um, they did not have showers and they did not have, uh, they did have water. So there's no showers or bathhouses. They have just the porta potties. So if you do come, um, actually, I think if you look at Brian Waller, Brian Haybell Waller's uh, video of uh, Dave Purdens last year, you will see how I did my redneck shower. And uh, it's a very simple and cheap uh, method to showering. Um, works freaking good. And uh, it's, it works good enough that my wife is willing to go um, Friday. She's going to fly in Friday morning and I'm going to go pick her up. And uh, <clears throat> she's willing to use the shower that uh, that I make, which is a 150 quart cooler, um, a fountain, what is it, a fountain pump, a shower head, some garden hose, and a heating element to warm the water. Works great. Nobody's ever complained that's taking a shower in there. So, so I got to make I got to <laughs> I got to make an apology. Make an apology. And, um, James, I apologize. It's not Jay Mass. It's James. Uh, Jade was just yelling at me about that, going basically, dummy. It's James. So, um, John Mass. Sorry. <laughs> um, if the moderators can keep an eye out on uh, any um, problems in the chat. Like I've had for the last what five weeks or six weeks, whatever it's been. Um, but James, welcome. Uh, <laughs> James was the uh, one that flying the big American flag and the <clears throat> POA flag. PO, yeah, POW. I mean P POA. I'm thinking of KOA. POW flag, yeah. I don't think they were camping. Well, well, I'm thinking about camping. <laughs> so you answered the one question. They, now they do have porta potties, but no whatever. Yeah. Question for you about yeah, they have about Kentucky. Go ahead. Yeah, you say you can cross over into Kentucky. Is there any, anywhere you can land out that you know of? Yes, right on. Yeah, right on the river. I'm gonna have to pull up my video now. Right on the river. Right, blah, 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 blah. The river. Um, the, the Ohio River, you do have um, a couple outs right on the um, river's edge there. Let me go down here to Dave Purden's, find it real quick. Um, there it is. Okay. So, hold on here. I'm trying to find, uh, I mean, we flew so many times to, um, I don't know what direction is what. Which way is the uh, Ohio River run? Is it north and south? If it's north and south, we went north a whole bunch and went miles north. And there's there's outs everywhere. It's a lot, a lot of uh, farm area. Um, if you do land out in some of these fields, you are going to have quite a long haul. So plan your emergency outs, your engine outs accordingly so they're not too far from someone to come pick you up. Because some of these fields are a mile by mile diameter, and you're screwed if you land in the middle of it. I'm trying to find my uh, going over to. I'll ask. I'll ask another question that goes right along with that same thing, Shane. While you're looking, is is there any place in on the Kentucky side where you could actually land? You know, and just yes. launch. Them? Yeah, there was, I'm, I'm trying my best to find, so what I will do is I'm going to go ahead and screen share what I got here. And at the beginning of this, on this takeoff, it does show the, the Kentucky side. Um, but let me, I don't care about sharing sound. We'll just do uh, the optimized video. And then we'll enlarge it. And then this is Smart Car Brian. Yeah, how you like that opening intro right there. These mountains are not as tall and or as large or as many as was in Mountain City, Tennessee. 
there's our camp that we had last year. Um, so we're looking at, this is all farmlands. And right here comes up the Kentucky, oh, stop right there. So if you were, if you were to have, this is con, con, the Kentucky side right here. So you can land anywhere in here if you need it to be. Um, there's multiple places over there. If you look right there, there's, let me back that up just a touch. Oh crap, too far. Come on. Of course it's not gonna. Anyways, there's there's a there's ample amount of space over there to uh, cross over here. This is all Kentucky over here. So you have all of this area over here. This is all soybean. Can you imagine landing out, say over here? And having to get to that road there, it's going to be a drag. It's going to yeah. be horrible. Those are huge fields. Yeah. You're in a large uh, farming area, so you don't have to worry about flying over too many houses, congested areas. It's absolutely gorgeous. I mean, it was so much fun. I cannot, absolutely cannot wait. So... This next clip that's coming up, I haven't watched this video in a while. So this is the abandoned golf course. And this little lake right here is only a couple inches deep. Or I'm sorry, this little creek, uh, pond or whatever it is. So this is all abandoned. So we get to explore and have fun. This little pond here is only maybe a foot deep at the most. So this is where I did my first foot drag. That's Smart Car Brian um, getting ready to do his. This was last year, so I was fairly a new pilot. I am just over a year and a half now. And uh, I think I had 70 hours on my motor at this time, which I have 140 now. So I'm twice, I'm twice the pilot I was then. Just kidding. But anyways, yeah. So this is the next morning. This is the high school here, which they all the kids love watching us fly over. But you see what's coming in over here? Yeah, fog. This this was absolutely amazing. And that little turn right there, by the way, scared me. <laughs> I remember that. Like, I turn, I'm like, oh. And I look at it now, I'm like, that was ridiculous. That was nothing. So look, everybody's just going and playing. And we absolutely had a great time. So, so what time of the day is that? This is first thing in the morning. You want to see a midday flight? I'll show you a midday flight. Hold on. I mean, I, we just had so much fun here. It was just amazing. I can't wait. You can tell it's a midday flight. No, this is my midday flight here. So as, as I'm flying along, you'll see my, my knees and then the, the... Actually, this is not the midday flight. My bad. Hold on. This is another morning. Oh, right here. This is the midday flight. Why do I know? Because I'm in shorts. Because in the morning, um, it was a little cold in the morning. You had to wear pants, maybe a sweatshirt, but for the most part, it was awesome. By, by midday, you're in shorts, tank top, ready to rock and roll. And this is my very first midday flight. And I really learned a lot from this flight because anytime you hit some darker areas, you would get bumps, you you get thermals or what have you, and then everything would be go back to normal, and then you hit some darker areas and you, nothing major though. It was, I mean, for the most part, look how clear it is. It was open skies, no clouds. You can tell by the trees. It's you know midday flight, and uh, that's pretty much it. I just was in awe that I was flying midday. There's Brian doing dumb stuff. See my knees are in the shadows. And <laughs> now they're not. <laughs> Anyways, all right. So that's my midday flight. I absolutely loved it. Had a blast. Can't wait to do it again. Right. Have you, Will, have you done any midday flying yet? Uh, I did at um, Bad Apples. We had a couple days where we could fly midday. I don't know if you did or not. But. I did not, no. I flew first thing in the morning and in the afternoon, but I mean, I didn't really, I didn't really do much after that. It just, 
I don't know. Hanging out with you guys, <clears throat> the the whole hangout part. That's that kind of what got me going with the doing the the Tuesday night hangout show. Is this is to me is like hanging out with you guys at the fly-ins, just less personable, if you will. Um, some of my greatest things. I I go out and fly, have a great morning. It's beautiful, no bumps. It's all just perfect flying. You get you come back, you land, you hang out with with everybody and, and we just shoot the shit all day long and i did i did by the way get a new scare toy just so you know yeah. does anybody want to see a scare toy uh -huh. i don't know if my secondary scare toy will be uh in before uh dave purdens but i hope i hope it is hold on let me grab it real quick I, I'm sure. Guys, I'm sure that I'll get a chance to see it. Don't worry. You're gonna see it, all right. <laughs> all right, and I have something else to show you guys because at at um, what you call it at Moonshiners, my wife was there, and every morning. Three, four o'clock in the morning, she had to go to the bathroom. And of course, I got up with her and did everything that a man should do take his wife to the bathroom, do all that stuff. And can I tell you, it was such a pain. I mean, I love her to death, but I just have to walk outside and, and do my business and come back in. She has to go do this whole process of getting on the golf cart, driving over to the FBO, going to the bathroom, blah, blah, blah. It was a lot of work. So in a second, I'm going to show you what I just bought. It's brand new. I can't wait to use it. I mean, she can't wait to use it. So this is the old scare tactic little snake, if you will. Here is the new one. Ooh, that's a good one. I nice. know, right? Nice. This is awesome. <laughs> you go. I don't know if you, if you can see it very well with the screen. But, oh, shoot. So, with <laughs> is that a I mean, rattlesnake? No, actually, it's a python. To be honest with you, oh, see, it's got the it's so the way you can tell a snake is poisonous or not is by the eyelid or by the eyes. If they're round and they don't have, um, so a poisonous snake will have a round eye with with a slit of a pupil. That's usually the best way to tell. And you can usually tell when they're when they're attached to you. You can just look at them and go, "Oh yeah, that's poisonous," as they're attached to you. No, I'm just <laughs> kidding. <laughs> but the best, I'm just kidding on that part. But the best way to tell is their eyes. Um, if they have a, a little slit um, up and down um, pupil, then they're poisonous. Easiest so way to tell. So if the pupil goes is vertical, is poisonous. So, Yes. So if, if a non if a snake is non poisonous, um, it'll just be all black. Their eyeball will be black. Uh -oh. Easiest way to tell. I got gotcha. you. Um, and, and if you're not one hundred percent sure, don't touch it. Plain and simple. Okay. I do need to turn my background off, which because I want to show you what I bought. Crap. How do oh background? Okay. Here we go. I'll figure this out one day. Um. Eric has a question. Go ahead, Eric. Uh, no, I don't. Jade has a question. Go ahead, Jade. No, he had a question about the snake, and I <laughs> he needs to ask. What, what, what do you want to know about the little snake? She wanted to know if the snake has one eye and a vertical slit. Is it poisonous? No, it's bipolar. <laughs> <laughs> this is what I deal with on a daily basis around here. <laughs> <laughs> okay, because oh, anybody Lord. tell me? Can anybody tell me what this is? And it's the diaper bag. bag. The skinny <laughs> chef chain lunch bag. Um, <laughs> after Krista gets done using it, maybe. <laughs> okay, this goes back to the no pooping in the camper thing. I was going to say that's a mobile so, poopy unit. It is totally. 
So here it is. Whew. Hold on. So this is what the wife is going to get to use. Don't show us. It's brand new. Okay. It better be. It better be because I've had it all up in it. <laughs> hey, this I, I got a brand new toilet. This long off off topic. My my uh my daughter's bathroom. I put a brand new toilet in there. Didn't tell her. I put milk and cereal in the bowl at the bottom of it and was eating cereal out of it. When she came in, she's like, the fuck? What, what is wrong with you? I go, well, you get a spoon. Help me eat this. She's like, uh, no. Like she, I was like, it's a brand new toilet. I mean, it's never been used. She's like, oh, okay. Hey, hey Shane, you, you know they, te they test those at the factory, right? I, I know I bleached it multiple times <laughs> prior to doing it because I know it's got dirt and dust and everything else on it. So anyways, so this is the toilet and it's got a holding tank at the bottom. So you pull this and it goes in there and then you close this so you don't get any smells or whatever. It's got a little pump here so you can flush out the, the commode and then you disconnect this top piece from the bottom piece and then you can take this and get, turn it out this way, unscrew it dump the waste into the porta potty and you're good to go. She's only supposed to use this during the night. Bet you it doesn't happen. Anybody care to add a wager to this gets used all the time. It gets filled. And then she looks at me like, Hey honey, this doesn't hold anything because it's full. And I'll be like, mm, I know you ain't using that just at nighttime. I mean, you're using it more than just at nighttime. So, long story short, that's going to be an argument. Just so you know. How much did that cost? All right. Man? That was a uh, hundred and maybe ten bucks. Um, honestly, hundred and ten dollars to not have to deal with getting up in the middle of the night. I bought a. Um, so I looked for the um, Insta Shade that Mark has, the six by four. Insta Shade, and they're sold out on, at Walmart.com. I can find almost identical tint, which is almost th twice as much um, on Amazon. I was like, I'm not paying twice as much for for one of those. So I ended up getting a pop up personal shower, but it's a two person personal shower um, for I think it was fifty bucks or sixty bucks. So now she can, I can put that in one side of it and we can shower on the other side of it. So it makes Wait, hold, hold on a second. Hold, hold on. You are going to get that little two by four tent that Mark used to cover his generator. And you are going to slide the toilet under that. Dude, you sit on no. the toilet and that's going to be your new hat. <laughs> that was no, a little I'm short. Not I am not sitting on this. So the four by six was for the redneck hot, the hot tub shower. Um, and you put a tarp around that and then you can shower in there and it's all good. We did it last year. I'm actually going to pull up um, Brian Waller's uh, video from last year. Um, I'm still maybe. missing something. That thing that Mark had was only like two feet tall. Are you all of a sudden um, have little people in your... Hey, Shane Mark, fit Mark. underneath it. Shane fit underneath it once before. Yes, he did. <laughs> he did. Um, would anybody like to explain to Eric that four by or a six by four uh, tent how it works actually? Yeah, like like every Mark. other one of them, the legs extend. Oh, I thought that was <laughs> as tall as it gets. <laughs> He's killing me, man. Uh, all right, so Dale, North Carolina was be was after the Swanee fly-in, correct? Fly it if you got it. There it is. Okay. Hold on. Allow me to find the uh, redneck hot tub shower thing, my bobber. And there's old Major having a good old time. Poor Major. Yeah, that was before oh. Swanee. Yeah. 
I paid like $35 for this heating element to heat the water and the uh, 150 quart cooler. And then I already had the fountain pump. I already had the hose. I already had the shower head. I just kind of all put it together and it heats the water up to like 100 and whatever. And actually one night we had it up to like 128 degrees, had to add cold water to it because no one could take a shower. Um, Maybe that's it right there. Hold on. So long story short, um, I mean, it's perfect. Three guys individually took three individual showers. I'm going to go ahead and express, the, express that real quick. <laughs> <laughs> and we still had enough water left over at the end of it to do dishes and stuff like that. It was it was uh, pretty nifty. So you took, we you didn't mean, we, at the, you're not at the same time, but one after the other and you still had hot water left? Oh yeah! Oh, totally. That that's pretty impressive. I'm trying. I'm trying to find it. If anybody else can help me find it, I am not having much luck. What are you looking for? Um, it's uh, fight if you got it. Fly in twenty twenty part two. Oh, maybe it's in part one. Aha! Uh -huh. I'm in part two right now. I don't know if that's that's got to be it right there. My first or flight 86 first fly in. But yeah, we have a uh, six a six way plug that plugs into the um, the fountain plug or fountain pump that is uh, hooked you know hooked to the six way. So when you go in there, it's on a GFI. You hit the you hit the pump, you turn it on, and the water starts flowing, and then uh, no, that's not it. And then when you're all done, you turn it off. Now I use these foam pads that I got from Harbor Freight that you stand on, and the whole thing is wrapped in uh, a tarp, and it's got a roof on top. So the nice thing is that water runs off of these foam pads, sits on the ground below, soaks into the ground, but you get all this residual steam. So as you're done showering, this steam is in the uh, in this room that's it's so you're getting uh, dressed after you dry off and it's still warm. It was like forty something degrees at nighttime there, and uh. it was awesome, dude. I, I literally had no issues at all um, with showering in there. Actually, I think we ended up having four guys at one night um, shower in there individually. I just got to point that out. I don't trust none of you guys. I don't know where Brian did with this video, man. I, I, I'm having the worst luck finding. Because I know he goes through and he talks about the outdoor shower and how it sets up, and I, I, I walk him through it. And uh, I'm not, I don't see it. All right, forget it. Trust me when I tell you, it works and it works great. Maybe you'll let me try it out. Yeah, dude, I have, I, yeah, I got no problems. Um, like I said, they got water there. So you, I, we'd literally go over and fill the 100 quart, 150 quart cooler up. And then uh, I put, as the generator's running, I put this, uh, this little heating element. I showed it before, I believe. It's got, it's like 20 or 35 bucks on Amazon. It's a 1500 watt water heater. So you just drop it in, plug it in. And it only takes 20 minutes to heat this water from pretty cold, you know, groundwater to um, over 105, 106 degree water. And uh, you can start showering right away. Now, there, there were a couple nights when I was like, well, dishes are already done, everything's done. And I was the last one to take a shower. I just hung out in there. I was like, this is pretty nice, too. <laughs> like, just hang out. And I still never used all the water in it. I couldn't believe you figure the pump is pumping, let's say three or four gallons a minute. 150 quart cooler holds how many, how many gallons of water? Anybody got a calculator? What is it, four quarts to a gallon or two quarts? Yeah, about, about 38, somewhere close to that. So 38 gallons, you figure if it's, do, if it's pumping four gallons a minute, so four times 30, 36, 38, 
I mean, that's quite a bit of. Uh, hold on. I don't have a calculator with me, so I, don't, I can't figure that out. I'm too dumb in my head. I'd come up with four billion. No, I'm just kidding. <laughs> so you have quite a bit of time to uh, to take a shower. I mean, you're not. My wife is going to eat up a lot of that. I'm pretty sure of it. But like I said, it only takes 20 minutes to heat the water back up. So we could literally put more water in it and start over. It wouldn't take but 20 minutes to get everything going. Can't beat that, right? Yeah. So you got, you're going to bring your generator, obviously, but yes. How much do you really need it for other than, other than that? Um, just to charge phones or whatever. But I, again, I have my paratrailer, which is set up with, um, which is set up with um, solar and, uh, during the day, if, if I decide to take a nap, I can I could run the the, um, the AC in there off the generator. But for the most part, I mean, my cell phones all charge off of 12 volt USBs that are in the camper. And I did learn I did learn from the last trip to Mountain City that I do need to add a second battery, deep cycle battery. Um, some nights or some days when we didn't have 100 percent sun. It was overcast or raining. I did not have enough battery charge or recharge to last all night long to run one, one um, 110 uh, fan and the 12 volt fan in the exhaust. So I did learn that I do need a second battery for that just, just for a second or two or three days of no, no real good sun, then I, I could use a second battery. So at Dave Purden's, I will have two batteries. Um, I have two, four, six, seven. I have seven USB ports in there. Um, if anybody does need to use, you know, charge their phones or whatever um, during the day, or GoPros or whatever. I mean, there's seven uh, USBs in there. So have at it. Be more than hey, uh, is is Mark going? Mark, are you going? Yeah, I'll be there. Well, maybe I will go because I do need to get the oil in the generator changed. <laughs> yeah. Hey, you're talking some, you're talking some smack, but I went out and got the correct 10W20. What is it? 10W30. Yeah. Whatever 10, it is, 10. it's on. My, I have it. I have it sitting in the in the shed. I just got to pull the generator out and, and change the oil before I go. And I don't Shane, know how many hours is on. Does your house battery what? not? Does your house battery not recharge off your generator in the daytime? It does if I add a. Uh, I borrowed. I borrowed um, Waller's uh, battery charger. So during the day when we were running the air conditioner, um, I just hooked that in as well, and then recharged the batteries on. Because we had like three days or four days of some real overcast days. Not saying it was raining, but. This, this overcast and I wasn't getting a hundred percent charge back on the battery. So if, if by the time the sun went down, if I wasn't at at least 12.9, 12.8, 12.9, it would not last overnight. So really a second battery would definitely be uh, uh, helpful and beneficial to, and it's less than a hundred bucks for, for that. I don't, I didn't go out and buy one of those $1,200 deep cycle solar panel batteries. I just bought a deep cycle that you would buy for your trolling motor or whatever at Walmart. It is what it is. It'll work. It'll be fun. The time I replace those batteries once a year, it'll be the same amount of money as uh, one of those gigantic $1,200 uh, batteries. That's how I look at it. I was saying, I have to replace them. Yeah. I got my scare toy here. You want to say it? Eating again. Yeah. It's the same meal. I'm just eating it. All he does is like eat. <laughs> and he still weighs 113 pounds. Unreal. Are you ready? Testing, testing. Okay, can you guys, can you guys you see, see me? can't see it, dang it. I can't see me. How do I get that to show up? Huh? Oh, hold, 
Hold on, Will. I got to pin you, Will. Hold on. Linda, you got to hold up one second. Will, if you do the talking. Um, oh, there we go. Check, check, check. You see it? Scary, yeah. isn't it? Yeah. What is that? <laughs> <laughs> My dog's toy. And she's been driving me nuts. So I got to give it to her. I think that would scare somebody. Hey, uh, yeah, right. Hey, Craig Taylor. In the <laughs> Come here. And we got Craig Taylor in the chat. He puts in there 1040 part one shower. <laughs> I, am I supposed to start a live at 1040? I, I, is that for me going in the shower? Is that Will going in the shower? Yeah. Uh, <laughs> I don't know. I'm still waiting for those, uh, the different camera angles that Mark shower I took in there. I was waiting for them to already come popping out on his uh, last video. Those are private. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, you, at least you, you got a roof title. over your shower, Shane, as opposed yeah. to Swanee. Yeah, Swanee was a little interesting. <laughs> I still will never forget that day. <laughs> but, uh, Mark, if, if you were to post that video of me taking a shower, would you put the title as How to Get 10 Gallons in a 5-Gallon Bucket? <laughs> 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 uh, Hold on, I'll be right back. There's someone at the door. Uh oh. <laughs> we all, know what that means. all right. Somebody tell me the city that uh, Purdens is in. I'm mapping it. Uh, P Portsmouth, Portsmouth, Ohio. Yeah, but wasn't it West Portsmouth? Can we make it West? Because that's closer to me, please. <laughs> I didn't sure. think you were going. Well, you know, you guys are talking about it. Now it's like I can drive all night again. You guys <laughs> made me drive all night to go to Moonshiners to make sure there's room for everybody else to leave their house. It's Thanks a lot. In Ohio, it's like two states away. Dude, I live in like the northernest most part of Wisconsin that takes like 30 hours to drive through. I think they call that Canada. But that's <laughs> <Whoa. fine. laughs> Hey, why did I go, Hey, why did I go check the back door? I got this problem solved right here. <laughs> right? <laughs> God damn it. What's wrong with this channel? I'm going to get a chance. Here's Will's squeaky toy. Oh, yeah. Stop that, no. Um, Thank you. <laughs> I'm so used to hearing it. I just drowned it out. Um, I'll get how, to do I, how do I fix this? Linda, can we can't hear please? you. We can hear you. We can see you. And we can really hear you. So, oh, my gosh. So, I, I'm so right. upset. So how do I fix this? I can't even. I can't. I can't see me. There's a bunch of checker squares on my screen now. Did you turn your monitor on? <laughs> <laughs> I mean, I, I can see you guys perfectly, but I hey, can't Shane. see me. Oh, well, I mean, we can see. It's, it's working just perfect, except you just can't see yourself. Right. So know that. If you tilt your camera down just a little bit, we'd be able to see your whole face. No, yeah. you can't. It's all checkers. Okay. It's all like little checkers. Like, you know, when people are doing interviews on the news and they don't want to be identified, so they like block it out kind of thing. Yeah. Well, that, that's Linda, we're, like. Linda, we're trying to protect your identity. <laughs> I <guess> so. <laughs> Hey, Shane, I think what I'm Craig so Taylor sad. was saying was that in uh, Brian's uh, part one video at 10 minutes and 40 seconds is where your uh, shower scene was. Right. So part one, but I, I see, oh, there it is. Turn. Um. I hope that noise was Will's uh, squeaky toy. Yeah, I'm going to have to take that well, it's, <laughs> it's not the part two. It's the, my return flight. Oh, yes, that's it. Okay, so I never hit that one. I'm sorry. Let me uh, hold on one second. Oh, so I'm going to show everybody how I did the redneck hot shower. Um, At, at Dave Purdens, we actually had the truck parked a little closer to the shower, if you will. So it worked a little. I think the shower 
we had less hose, so I think the shower head pressure was a little better than up here at uh, Vail, but it still worked just as fine. Well. There's no complaints by no means on mine. So I'm at 10.53, I didn't see it. Did I miss it maybe? No, it's Brian flying, hold on. Craig, what's the uh, name of the video? Because I am not having much luck here. Because I went to 1040. I did, I really enjoyed Vail, North Carolina too. Just, there was, I mean, the field was a little short, but uh, on, on left to right, but going down the runway was great. Too bad all the wind was coming on the short side of the field. You had maybe 30 yards. And then you had it, you hit tall grass. It was awesome. All right, Craig, I don't, I don't see it. Uh, 1040 Mark, Waller, show, shower. Okay. So I was just there. I went to 1040. It's him flying. I, I meant the wrong one, apparently. Hey, Shane, he dropped you a link to it. Ah, perfect. Because apparently I'm too dumb. Oh, you know what it is? I'm, I'm not, I have to scroll down. Okay. Then I'll go to 1040. Thanks, Craig. Appreciate it, sir. Because I'm apparently too dumb. Oh, yeah, that's it right there. Okay. Wait for it. Okay, now allow me to screen share, folks. Can I? Is it okay with everybody? I don't mean. All right. Let me a larger up. We don't really need uh, volume on this, but I, I, I can explain it. So there's the 150 quart cooler. That's the heating element. You must put that underwater first, drop it in the water. Did you notice the color of water? That's well water, not run through a filter, just so you know. But anyways, you gotta, you gotta drop this heating element in the water before you plug it in. And then it heats the water up. And then we take this fountain pump, which there's the fountain pump. You drop it into the water. And then you go, it goes through all the hose. And then welcome to the shower house, see? All good. Put your clothes over there on the cot. And then you take your shower right there. And that's pretty much. Now, of course, it, uh, the tarp is uh, a little better than that during the time we go. But anyways, so that's really the outdoor shower. I mean, it wasn't uh, anything spectacular, but it did work. And that's all that really mattered, right? That it works. I think it's pretty smart. I mean, when you're... Now, how do I get rid of this whole damn screen? Oh, there we go. So, my thing is, I don't have... I'm not broke, but I don't have a shit ton of money. And uh, so, it's a lot easier to um, come up with ideas of how-tos than it is to... Because I looked at one of those propane on-demand heaters, and they're like $300 or whatever. I was like, dude, I ain't got that kind of cash. So anyways, I got uh, the next best thing. I got a redneck hot tub or shower. Always wanted to call it uh, a hot tub, but I know it's not a hot tub. So the next thing would be, I wonder if you could get something that was solar powered that would like warm the water, you know, all throughout the day. Well, I know you could use... Uh, a solar um, water pump and pump your water. Now they do have those black bags. They're like five gallon solar bags. They're black and you lay them on, on the ground or whatever. And then the heat, um, the sun will heat up the bags and then you can use that as a shower um, bag as well or as a heating source. Um, but Really, for 35 bucks, I just plug in the generator. I'm probably going to have to plug it in for something anyways. And uh, just 
just go for it. I mean, I, we did 10 days. We did 10 days at Vail, North Carolina, using that system right there in a tent every day. Huh. And it was, it was absolutely no, no problem. I mean, we seriously had uh, no issues with it. Worked great, except for the, the funny looking color of water, which is straight out of the grounds. That's why I went to the store and got gallon water to uh, cook with and clean with because I was like, I don't know about all that. I don't trust that. <laughs> JR, I'm eating eggs with cheese and pancakes. That's what I'm eating. He wanted to know. We have beef stroganoff, which is not what we call it here at the house. Krista cooked tonight. So, is it a frozen dinner or what? No, it's actually boiled noodles, which everybody knows. That's how the girl does. If, if it's not requiring her to heat water up and put noodles in it, she's out. But it's, it's, um, she did have to, she did have to brown some uh, stir fry steak and then uh, put it all together with some cream of mushroom and whatever else. I, I have no idea. I've never watched her make that. It's beef stroganoff. Uh, it's pretty easy, apparently, because Krista can make it. It's easy. That's what she'll tell you. That's not me saying it. That's what she'll tell you. If I can make it, anybody can make it because it's easy. Yeah, I don't know. As I say, there's some talent to cooking. I mean, I, I, I have cooked before, but it does not come easy for me at all. So did you, when, like, when you were growing up in your family, did your family kind of all chip in and did you learn how to cook when you were growing up or what? No, um, I actually, uh, I, I did not have, <laughs> I did not have great growing up experiences. Um, after I met my wife and we got, um, uh, we got married, well, actually before we got married, she let me know that she did not cook and, uh, and I said, okay, well, I need to learn how to cook. So I literally just started trying things out. I mean, I've, I've been through a bunch of failed dinners, dinner after dinner after dinner were failed dinners. And then finally, I just started. The biggest thing with cooking, um, if anybody ever asked me, what's the best advice? Make a meal. If it fails, change one little thing. Don't change it all because it's going to fail again and you don't know what would have worked. So let's say that you're making homemade pot pies. Um, I made them for the very first time. I got a video on it. They came out fantastic. I got a bunch of crap from it because I literally used chicken. So everybody else was using um, leftover rotisserie chicken that they made. I literally used chicken out of a can. It was freaking delicious. It was delicious. There was no complaints in my house about the, um, uh, the canned chicken. But I mean, it worked out great. Now, if it what if it didn't turn out great, instead of changing a bunch of stuff, I could have just changed the leftover rotisserie chicken and, and actually done a rotisserie chicken. And uh, so that way, brisket is the same way. Um, a lot of people mess up on briskets and they they change stuff from the temperature, the times, the seasonings. Okay. Do everything exactly the same that you messed up before, except for change one little thing, maybe the temperature or the time, but not time and temperature, because now you don't know which one worked better or worse. There's, you got two of them that did worse. One could have been great. So when it comes to cooking, no matter what you're cooking, you always do little changes and hope for the best. I, I'm gonna go ahead and put this out right now in the chat on the panel. Anybody ever heard of beef knuckle? Because I just smoked one Saturday. First now, time oh, ever. Oh, at, at Moonshiners, whenever I cook breakfast or lunch, everybody says that one thing needs to be changed, and that was the cook. <laughs> <laughs> one small thing. Yeah, yeah one small thing. <laughs> um, so... I, have any of you guys ever heard of beef knuckle? I, I have not. No. And I looked on YouTube. If you YouTube how to smoke a beef knuckle, you'll get five videos. Five on a 
gigantic piece of beef. That is like so hard to find on YouTube is go ahead and like type in how to smoke a brisket. You'll get 158,000, you know, videos. But when it comes to, um, <laughs> Dave Wolf says, I heard of beef knuckles this week, Shane. Yeah, because I told you about it. Um, it turned out phenomenal. It actually, after I smoked it, I, I started it at 5 a.m. and went to about 3.30, I think it was, and I let it sit in the oven for an hour and a half. Um, it ended up kind of coming apart like a, uh, a, a pot roast or a, um, a beef roast, if you will. Um, I took it the internal temperature of 200. I think really it should have only went to 130 internal temperature and then it would have been more like a roast beef where it's still kind of red in the center and uh you know lesson learned but i plan to make another one that it was 11 pounds of meat for a beef for i think it was 32 dollars which right now is pretty damn good um my brisket i was looking at i was looking at 130 I think it was $138 for 17 pound brisket. So yeah, the, uh, all right, DP, I already seen the jokes coming when, when I said beef knuckle. Moose knuckle was the first thing I thought of exactly when, uh, when I picked it up. I was like, huh. I actually went to the store, picked it up, looked at it. I went, huh, I need to YouTube how to cook this. And I found five videos. That's it, five. That's unheard of. What video can you can you try to look for that you will only five find five videos of on YouTube? Beef I mean, it's crazy. Yeah, beef knuckles it. That's the one. <laughs> well, I, I still don't know what a beef knuckle is, but I, th I don't think I would like it. So it comes from close to where they get top sirloin steaks from. Um, it's in that same area. It's a very lean piece of meat. So with that being said, I was thinking that I had to cook it slow and for a long time. So once the internal temperature, I was actually shooting for 205 internal temperature, kind of like a brisket. But I was like, I don't know. I don't feel right with, with going that high. So I pulled it earlier. I mean, it was tender, it was moist, it was freaking delicious. But I, I should have probably stopped at 125, 130 and made it more like a roast, if you will, or a roast beef. And uh, we just did um, hoagie subs, grilled hoagie subs. I, I um, sauteed onions, um, peppers, uh, green pepper, jalapenos, and mushrooms. And then put the, I, I um, grilled the, the uh, hoagie bun I put mayonnaise, mustard, put the meat in there, put it on top, grilled everything, and uh, melted the cheese on it, and, and made hoagie subs for dinner last night, and it was freaking awesome. Actually, I'll have to send you, I have um, a hoagie sub I took to work that uh, I have to uh, have for lunch tomorrow, but you don't have to. I want to. Um, I'm going to make for lunch tomorrow, and I'll send... Uh, some of you guys on the panel, what it looks like out of my office, out of a toaster oven and a microwave. I'm going to show you what I can do with it. It freaking is awesome. You know what my favorite thing was? You cooked at the uh, fly-in. Actually, there were a couple of things, but man, I love those quesadillas. They were yeah, out everybody, of the world. I need, to, I need to add the queso sauce and my wife seems to not want me to do that but I think I need to add that little queso sauce just to make it, I, to me, they're great, but I think it's missing that queso sauce. I don't know why she doesn't eat it with the queso sauce. So she doesn't care one way or the other, but yeah, the, I get more compliments on that chicken quesadilla than I do anything else that I've ever made. 100%. I, I'm with Krista on that. I don't like queso sauce either. Yeah, I you don't like it. any white <laughs> wait queso sauce is white sauce <laughs> wait 
I mean, I put, <laughs> I put like sour cream on it, and that like was fine. But then I guess I don't know what queso sauce. No, no it's a, it's a. I don't even know what queso sauce is to be honest with you. It, I know you it's can like, find it's it. like a Me <laughs> it's like a Mexican cheese sauce. Okay. Right. Well, they were yeah. perfect just the way they were, in my opinion. Yeah, I agree. I I liked it. It's the it's the it's the grilling of the cheese that that makes it everything. Um, honestly, um, when you grill that cheese on that blackstone and you get it crispy on one side, and it's still gooey on the other side, and you flip it onto the queso and you put it all together, <laughs> everybody's like, "What do you do differently?" That's it. That's the secret right there. You can literally add all the cheese you want on that on that uh, tortilla or that flour tortilla. But it will not give you that flavor of that grilled cheese does on that queso. I'm telling you right now. Um, Scary Berry Groupie. Hello, dear. Long time no see. Glad you're here. But yeah, I absolutely love those. And Krista, I can make those every day and she'd still be lining up, ready to go on those. Nick, how's it going? Other Nick. The other yeah, Nick. Yeah, other Nick. Now, I will tell you, PBG, the other Nick, is a picky eater. And I do have questions for him. And if you can answer those in the chat, it'd be great. How did you like the chicken quesadillas? He doesn't do hot dogs or sausages. I did give him a Nathan's hot dog. I was kind of curious at how he, I, he did say, I asked him at the fly-in, but I was, and then, Nick, if you didn't really truly like it, that's fine. There's some people just don't like hot dogs, but Nathan's hot dogs are not hot dogs in my opinion. They are, <laughs> they're all beef hot dogs. I mean, they're, I know it's an oxymoron, but like you get a ballpark hot dog and that thing is nasty. I will not eat one of those, but a Nathan's hot dog, they're no problem to me. Well, yeah, our hot dogs like from the rooter to the snooter, everything in between kind of pushed into a bin ground up and put in a casing to the snooter. <laughs> I mean, yep, that's all, that's the, way it. From, uh, all <laughs> the way from beef to pork to chicken beaks. I mean, I, I don't yep. know. Nathan hot dogs are by far way better tasting than any other hot dog I've ever had. I, I just, a Nathan's hot dog, I will not eat another hot dog unless it's Nathan's hot dog. I will tell you that we did eat when we got there um, Saturday afternoon, I think it was, they had some hot dogs we had not eaten since five o'clock. Well, actually, we left the house at like 5.30 in the morning or some crap. We didn't eat nothing all day long, showed up at the flying and they're like, hey, we got some leftover hot dogs. I ate one of those hot dogs and regretted it, but I was so hungry that I ate it. So did Nick. I just, I mean, it was, I was like, it's not a Nathan's hot dog, but so be it. You know, it, it was free and, and I was thankful, but I wouldn't make any of my friends those hot dogs, just so you know. Hey, I, I double checked the uh, date and the date is the third through the sixth. So it is Friday through Monday. So we're just going to hang out at my wife's cousin's house and ride horses all day long and fly in the morning and the afternoon is what you're saying? Uh, I'm going to come up on the first, which is Wednesday. So I'll be up there Wednesday afternoon. You're fine with me, dude. I'm going to be yeah. nonstop. Uh, like I said, I have, so I'm going to, when I get up there, I'm leaving here probably two o'clock in the morning from our Saturday morning. I'll be there Saturday afternoon. And then, Sunday, I'm going to fly, and then when I get done flying, I'll go over um, to where I'm going to be hunting and clean out some shooting uh, shooting lanes, and then uh, I got nothing to do after that. So uh, there'll be some horseback riding. There'll be some uh, uh, flying. There'll be a bunch of flying. I can't – I did, I think it's – I want to say it's an hour, or hour and a half away from um, – it's actually, there. Google says it's hour and 45. So it's flyable is what I hear, because we don't have to, <laughs> we don't fly, we fly in a straight line. We don't have to go all the way down this road to that road over this road. So I might see if she won't um, drive my trailer and truck over there and uh, have her husband follow her. That'd be pretty awesome, dude, to fly into the fly-in, literally. 
Uh, Hebrew, uh, Dave Wolf said uh, Hebrew hot dogs are another good hot dog, but my all time favorite is Nathan's, just so you know. And I'm so and just glad like I'm Dave, not a picky eater. I know, right? Me neither. Um, and Dave, you like um, Skyline chili, and I like Gold Star. Skyline has too much nutmeg in it for me, but I will do chili, uh, Gold Star chili every time, five ways, every way. With a coney, please. For for those who have not been to Ohio or not live in Ohio, you 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 don't know what we're talking about. But uh, Mac, uh, McElroy, you've had uh, Skyline or Gold Star chili before. I have had Skyline before. What did you think about it? I think it's good. It's different. It's different than what I'm used to, but it's good. I think maybe we can have my wife make um, her version of um, Ohio uh, chili spaghetti. It's not quite as, I actually prefer hers over, and I'm not saying this because first of all, she don't listen to my show. So I can say whatever she don't know and she's in there. So it's all fine. But I actually do prefer her chili over what they have there, except for I like their cheese up the way that their cheese is up there, I, I, that cheese is phenomenal, by the way. Anyways, what did uh, DP say? Yep. Yes. Okay, so it's a 10 and a half hour <laughs> drive for me to Purdy's. Jesus, so that means, that's nothing. It's that, that, that turns into a damn 14 hour drive for us. So Why do you have to stop in the bathroom? You just pull over on the side of the road, get out, open the door, and go pee, and then get back in. Well, Take I a know, bathroom. I know. It's, uh, maybe we'll go. We'll be able to get there in time to help everybody pack up. <laughs> Did y'all see Dave uh, Wolf's uh, comment? Gold Star Chili is made with cat intestines. <laughs> Gross. <laughs> oh, that's just funny. What is Gold uh, Star Chili? Who the hell is who just entered the I don't know who that is that just entered the uh, waiting room or how they found out. Jay, do you see that? Who is that? Do you know that person? No. You want to let them in and see if they behave? No. Oh. No, oh, what if they do something stupid? Then I have to <laughs> cancel this whole thing. I don't know who that is. And how did they get this number? Unless they're on the uh, chat that um, right on Facebook. I'll get ready, guys, because I'm fixing it in a minute. Ready? One, two, three. There we go. Oh, it's Jesus, Linda. What? I don't know who the <laughs> hell this. <laughs> <laughs> Poor Linda. <laughs> is the funniest thing that's ever happened. Uh. Oh, that was pretty I, I funny. I had my finger on the button. <laughs> Me too. I was just like, okay, here we go. Here we go. And then it's just Linda. And by just Linda, I mean, thank God it's Linda. <laughs> yeah, she's Linda's not uh, smiling. And she's like, what the heck is going on? We can see Linda. Hey, Shane, have you ridden horses before? Yes. Okay, good. I mean, I just wanted to be, if you hadn't ridden horses before, you probably, it'd be tough, I would think, to... For me, it was anyways, the riding the horse. The next day, I couldn't freaking move. <laughs> oh, no, no, no. I, I ride every year when I go up there. That's how I do my scouting of gear and stuff. I, I go through. So in Ohio, it's not nothing like Florida where it's nice and flat here. Um, in Ohio, you literally. Um, so if you're going up a steep hill, you never just grab the horn of the saddle. You actually have to grab the mane of the 
um, on the back of the horse's uh, neck because if the saddle breaks and you're holding on, you're depending on that as your only hold, you're going off the back of it. So you hold the horse's mane. And on the way down the hill, you kind of just grab the back of its thigh, if you will, and you lean back depending on how steep the hill is. And uh, that's how you hold on. You don't depend on the saddle to keep you on the horse because if that saddle breaks, it's kind of like your wing. If your wing collapses, you need a reserve. So that mane is my reserve on the on the going up the hill. Now, <clears throat> I do have to videotape when we go through the creek bottoms because they have um, that shell um, rock in there. They're like slate rocks. And these damn horses, man, they will get on there and start slipping and sliding. And it's all you can do to hang on for dear life. And it's the funniest thing. If it's not happening to you, if it's happening to someone else, it's the funniest thing it's ever <laughs> that you've ever seen. If it's happening to you, you're just like, oh, Jesus, I'm going to fall. <laughs> but these horses, these horses, Go ahead, they're sir. not quite that. They're only like 14, 14 and a half hands tall. So when I do, when I mean hands, they literally just like one, two, three, four, five, all the way up to 14, 14 and a half hands are tall hands is how you measure a horse. And they're only like 14, 14 and a half inch or hand tall horses. So they're not like gigantic horses. If you fall off them, you're going to die. They're they, like a Clydesdale. <laughs> Those jokers are huge. So. Well, the first time I rode a horse happened to be in Ohio. And I was riding with my cousin. <clears throat> and she was big into horses. And we were together. The two horses were together. And then all of a sudden, she, she kind of went ahead of me and turned a corner. And right at that point, the horse I was on, it just, boom, it took off as fast as it could run. Like it was trying to catch up to the other horse, you know. And uh, scared the heebie-jeebies. I just about fell off that, that horse. Can't believe I didn't. So. Well, the reason they do that, they, they, they compete with one another. So if one, if one is used to leading, when they're out in the pasture or whatever, one will be used to leading more than the others. And if one that's not normally leading in the pasture is out in front, the one that is will try to catch up. And if that means run to get in front of it, then so be it. kind of wish I knew that so, back then. Can, can, you guys see, can you guys see me down yeah. here? I'm in this, <laughs> this, this is horrible. I'm in this little tiny square on the bottom of my phone. <laughs> it totally sucks. Yeah, well, we can see you normally. We totally on, see you I'm, normally. I'm like, I'm on my phone. I'm doing, I've never zoomed on my phone before. So I'm on my phone. Hey, so, Linda. Um, I'm so sad. I don't know what's going on. You is sound there a reason too. that you use a separate name like Velvet? Do what now? <laughs> Do what? I don't know how to fix it on my computer. Can you explain the uh, nickname of Velvet? That, that's a stage name. I, that's what I, I was wondering. <laughs> <laughs> that's, Linda, I know. Linda, I is there something you want to explain? <laughs> I, <have> to, <laughs> <laughs> I, I saw that. I'm like, I don't know what that is, but I'll just keep moving on. So. I guess I was supposed to put my type my name in there, Paramount USA, but I just like whatever. I'm Velvet tonight, whatever. Well, the last <laughs> time I saw that, I had a fistful of singles. <laughs> <laughs> oh hey, my real God. quick. I don't know how to fix hey, real... that weird stuff going on on my Zoom. It when I got ready to go on Zoom, it just something popped up and it said. You need to update your Zoom, which has done it before. No big deal. And now I update it, and now I get that crazy little screen that you can't even see. I can't see myself on it. Hey, real quick, while I have uh, 21 people watching. So tomorrow, or I'm sorry. So next, next Tuesday, there are... There's a good chance there will not be a Tuesday night hangout. Um, reason why is, and Dave Wolf, um, I'm going to steal this from you because I already gave you props on this um, on the pre-show. Um, 
the 24th of this month is my son's, I believe he called it coming home. Uh, it's the day that we lost our son to cancer. So I'm not sure if I'm able to do the show or not. So I'm probably not going to do the show. Okay. If I happen to do the show, um, I will have a very, very um, amazing guest. You said you weren't going to say anything. No, no, I didn't explain nothing. No one knows who an amazing guest is. It could be Will Fly again. Who knows? Um, oh, wait, it's not Will? <laughs> <laughs> but anyways, so if if I don't do, if I'm not on at 8 o'clock next week, um, understand that I need a uh, yeah. com- homecoming. That's right. Um, so my son's homecoming um, to go to heaven on the 24th. So... Um, if it's not on, it's not on. If it is, well, there'll be something to uh, watch because it'll be pretty cool. Anyways, back to fart jokes and making fun of Eric. <clears throat> <laughs> That's my favorite part. <laughs> yeah, before you move on, though, Dave Wolf did say family first brother. So, yes. Yes. I agree. So, it, it really just depends on how I feel, how my wife is feeling, and... Which I can already tell you, it's going to be a shit show. <laughs> uh, and the Robins, it's all good. Just, yep. I will be back the Tuesday. Hopefully, I will be at, I believe, I will be at my wife's cousin's house. We're going to go ahead and call her Michelle, so I can stop saying my wife's cousin's house. We will be at Michelle's house, and she has some crappy internet. So we'll try it then, too. Who knows? <laughs> um Yes, DP, I do fully, I'm fully aware it's Denise's birthday. As soon as I heard it, I was like, oh, bad date. <laughs> <laughs> but yes, I do know um, that is her birthday. And I'm going to go ahead and say happy early birthday to her. Welcome to finally hitting 35. I'm just saying. Yay. Yeah, congratulations. Yeah, Ben, Ben, I think uh, Ben said it good. Uh, <clears throat> Shane, we'll be with you either way. You have the show or not. We, you know, I'm, we'll all be thinking about you. You and Krista. Mm-hmm. <clears throat> right. So anyways, that, I didn't mean to kill the show. I just wanted, while we had the most people watching, I just wanted to go ahead and state it may not happen. I know when I go to these fly-ins, like at Moonshiners, I couldn't even send out a video saying hey internet sucks i can't do it someone would send me a text in the morning and i would get it four hours later and then it took me six hours to send okay (laughs) to the to whoever texted me it was the the cell service there was horrible but didn't stop me i will tell you a funny story though i didn't spend any time on my phone so i got my weekly report to tell me that i was down something like 99% on my screen time on all these different apps that I spend all my time on, usually YouTube. This week, I'm sorry, last week, I get an update saying I spent 117% more time on my phone than I did the week before. (laughs) I was like, yeah, that's a problem. (laughs) No internet, down, down 98%. Have my everything back to normal. 117% 117% up from the time I didn't have internet. So I think we're all stuck on our phones. I mean, by say you all, I mean just me. I have a mouse in my pocket. Any idea how the cell coverage yeah. is at uh, Burdens? I will say that I posted on Facebook when I cracked my exhaust. I, I had no issues at all um, posting my cracked Y19 exhaust at 77 hours. Um, or 75 hours. Um, I believe it's okay there. I'm not a thousand percent sure. I didn't really do anything live there. I I take that back. I went Facebook live, um, from there and everything was fine. So I want to say that the the cell service is good for Verizon. While we're on the subject of, um, burdens, um, is there, 
are you saying that the, uh, what altitude are we at there? I have no idea. It was not the issue. <clears throat> I had no issues with takeoff. Um, I think I seen Sean in there. Um, Dave, Wolf, can you, do you know what the altitude is? I know JP showed up and left. So um, anybody in the chat, been to Dave Perkins, knows the altitude, the what, do, are we looking for AGL or? Are we well, I just, for, you know, is it going to be something like Moonshiners where it had real no, thin No, it's going to be like 500 feet. Oh, that's nothing. No, it, I, I, Mountain City was the first time that I have ever experienced something like that um, with, with the altitude. I didn't notice that at all at Dave Perkins, at all. I mean, it was easy up, easy down. Um, no, I... It's actually the first time I actually flew out, seen uh, uh, Dave Wolf said altitude is between seven and 800 feet. So it's nothing. I mean, you won't even notice the difference. That's nothing. So, how about, um, how about, uh, you know, I know you were talking about the, the hills that are around there. Get, get a lot of rotor. I mean, for the, I've never been there. And for the people that have not been there. Um, I, like I said, I never, that was the very first time I have ever flown near anything. And I would call those mountains until I went to Mountain City. I now call Dave Purden's some rolling hills <laughs> because I've seen some mountains now. When, you've, when you're flying for 10 minutes to get over a mountain and you just at the three-quarter mark of climbing over the mountain, that's, that's kind of a, a big piece of dirt. At Dave Purden's, I didn't. Um, I think those are no more than seven, 800 feet, maybe at the tallest, uh, Sean, uh, or Dave, can you tell me roughly about what you, height you think those, um, hills are at Dave Purdens? Cause I don't think they're over five, 600 feet, to be honest with you. Is Purdens on an airport or is it just at a, a private field? It's a private field. They actually do uh, soccer practice there, and they do um, um, they remote control airplanes. All right. Well, so I type in Portsmouth, Portsmouth, Ohio elevation. I come up with 533 feet. So it could be that it's, uh, you know, that's just like an average or so. I don't know how they right. come up with that. I will tell you, I am looking forward to it. Even having the man handle this pit boss or this pit, what is this thing? Pit barrel, what it, whatever this toilet thing is. I'm not excited about that. But I mean, this this is this is how much I hate getting up to go walk with her to the damn bathroom. Or actually, I didn't even walk. We got on the golf cart. But I, I the one thing I didn't understand at um at moonshiners they put all the bathrooms all the porta potties around one building and then way on the other side they put one for a guy that apparently is like 70 years old and they uh, he asked and they put one over there but was still not i mean why didn't they spread those out throughout the tarmac and make it more convenient for everybody but i mean i that's just my thing. I it's not say anything bad about moonshiners or anything like that. I just didn't understand why they didn't spread those out. At Dave Purden's, there's a uh, there's a road behind where everybody parks their campers and trailers and tents and stuff, and they put those porta potties throughout the whole field, so it's evenly spread. You can literally choose between one or this one over here, or this this porta potty over here, and but at Dave Purden, I mean at uh, Moonshiners, you had to drive to go to the bathroom, and I really, truly hated that, to be honest with you, because uh, I don't feel like I need to go that far to go to the bathroom, but I take my wife to the restroom. That's horrible. So, what is horrible? Yeah, you have to go walk so far just to go to the bathroom. Well, some of us don't have a three-bedroom, four-bath trailer. <laughs> with 72 people 72 people locked up 
Oh, oh my goodness. But so have I have I somewhat convinced you, Eric, to uh that you might want to go or what? Yeah, it's not totally off the uh, mark. I I may go. I I mean, I'll wait for Jade to get done with work and show up Saturday morning. Go up Saturday morning. Just show up, Eric. Show up. Just do it. Do it. Says the hey, girl that talk? I've offered to pick up along the way and always <laughs> says, I'm busy. <laughs> She's only... She's only busy on the weekends at the club. Well, I know with a name like Velvet. <laughs> <that's your laughs> Velvet <now. laughs> I, I have no idea what that is about. Seriously. I just, I just wanted to get on and watch the show. And I can see me on this little tiny corner of the screen here on my phone. Hey, I understand you're putting yourself through college. I understand. <laughs> <laughs> understand you're a single oh mom God. you guys are you're killing me you're killing me I'm telling you so hey 20 bucks is 20 bucks uh, yeah right there's market is 20 bucks is 20 bucks <laughs> and can we talk about um eric and jade's uh background i absolutely am jealous i said this on the pre-show i am so jealous of eric's uh so background jealous. photo right there. So uh, kills me. I want to do that. Every time I've tried to fly around a hot air balloon, something has happened. The wind changed where it, I couldn't penetrate. My exhaust cracked again. Um, I had an engine out different time. Like every time I get near one of those, kryptonite. It's my kryptonite every time. Yeah, so that background, you know, that was with those uh, the wing cameras that rip your wing but anyways that was at torchport fly-in that was in northern michigan uh no, wait it was in southern michigan the northern part how do you say that dp you would know but anyways it was south of the bridge the big bridge and then jade's was the uh the balloon fest that they had here in wausau wisconsin and uh, we weren't invited but we were at, no, we asked if we could fly with them, and they said, sure, not a problem. Um, they actually said, don't go under us, and please don't go over us, because I guess they can move up and down quite quickly, which I didn't know. Um, they can move up and down faster than they can move left and right. So, But I uh, did a lot of video and uh, flying around around them quite close, and then realized that the video that I had, I forgot to turn my camera on so but so that should help that should help your youtube channel out greatly yes exactly <laughs> uh-oh what what happened to will oh he's just always smiling can you not hear me what happened will no we lost you there you are. Did you see uh, Walter's comment? Yeah, I just approved it. Okay. <laughs> Jade goes, I tried to hide it. <laughs> Jade goes, I just approved no. it. <laughs> no. Dude, this show, is, this show is for just, I mean, just bad jokes and, and, and good times. So that was, that was right up the alley. I will read the comment from Walter. Shane's, or... No place Shane can't penetrate. <laughs> Smiley face with tears. I approve that because that shit's funny right there. <laughs> and and once again, this show is not to be taken serious. Jeez. Yay. For anybody that takes this show serious needs to uh well Yeah, but go. you hid somebody else's comment, so I'm really confused on you now. Um, no, if you go back, I can actually I thought that was uh actually I, I hid walters earlier for saying yeah. si yeah twice i didn't know what that was about and i know walters not saying anything offensive i'm or, or negative 
but there was someone in there earlier that was uh, actually I didn't mean I shouldn't have uh, blocked that one, but I don't know who it was earlier. I'm going back now. Um, so do they Sandy control the Paul? field? Do they control the field at Burdens? Uh, with uh, air dummies? Air dick? Uh, air dick? Air dick? Um, I, I don't remember. Um, I will tell you that if I had one thing negative to say about Dave Perkins is having the um, gyrocopter come in at 500 miles an hour with blades just to swing in as <laughs> there's paramotor pilots landing and taking off. I'm just glad I was on the ground because, dude, I'm not comfortable with none of that action. I was like, holy crap, this dude was cut and then they had some uh, fixed wing um hang glider power hang gliders i don't know what exactly what they what they're called but um i mean they left at night which they're perfectly legal to do and uh i thought it was pretty cool but personally like even at um at uh bad apples they had the uh, gyrocopter come in and i believe at uh, moonshiners but at moonshiners they actually have a runway that he's going to come on or, you know, land on. And, um, but at Dave Purden's, it literally, this dude came in for approach and was hoping that the, his approach was clear. I just could not, that's just a lot of blade to be swinging around <laughs> while I'm out on the field. You know what I mean? I'm just not comfortable with it. So Dave, yeah, it was, uh, you can't be uh, a dick at Purden's. Yeah. There are no dicks. Yeah, my wife I actually say moonshiners was a little crazy at times. Um, and I think that that would be the only thing that they could have done better. But um, I, I don't blame them at all. I blame a lot of the pilots because I, I saw very few people going, taking off and going out and getting away. But um other than that, Moonshiners wasn't too bad. Uh, as far as taking off in thin air, if if that's not a problem, maybe if I go out there, I'll leave the trike at home. And it's going to be cool yeah, there yeah. too. It's going to be what? I think cooler. I think, yeah. Go ahead. Uh, the I'm temperature, the weather wise. Yeah, it'll be cooler and lower lower uh, elevation. So yeah. Let me let me pull up the 15 day forecast for um, Portsmouth, which I already have in my phone. Apparently, look at me hey, go. It's important that you say West Portsmouth because that's like an hour less of a drive for me. Oh Jesus! Um, apparently, I do not have that. Well, can I can I say something while you're looking? Yes, sir. <laughs> Okay. Um, what's the deal? And I've noticed this a lot is pilots taking off and making an immediate sharp turn. Back That's what I was talking the direction about. Of where everyone's taking off. What is up with that? I mean, and, it's and, look at me. I mean, my, it's yeah, a sharp and, turn that you can't, that you couldn't possibly react if you were behind that person. You know what I'm saying? I mean, just in my opinion, there. usually, in my opinion, usually it is, uh, you know, your talented, experienced, good pilots, the ones that are doing that. Uh, moreover, somebody doing it on accident, it sees hot shots that they're talented pilots. But I mean, as soon as they get off the ground, they jerk a U-turn and backfly the field. And uh, uh, Mark, you know, Mark, just just to we have you doing that. on <laughs> No. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, tons of talent here. Right. <laughs> well, and that's all good. And you're right, Mark. You're probably right, because those are pretty some pretty sharp turns. But the people behind them may not be as talented and quick to oh, no, I, I, I agree with you a hundred percent. I I think it's ridiculous that the guys that should be setting an example, uh, they're the ones, in my opinion, they're the ones that do it the most often. 
Yeah. Um, Dave Wolf said that uh, Dave Perkins is more spread out and and why and, and way wider. And I would 100% agree with that over a lot. I mean, even Vail, North Carolina, it was it's a huge runway, but it was very short. At Dave Purden's, I actually on the short side of the field, um, instead of you know going long ways, I actually had a fail launch one morning. Um, set my wing down, blew it, you know, so that the cells were facing upwards and right, and then. Uh, I launched again and I did come close to wrapping myself around a tree, but I had time to take off and uh, make it over it barely. Um, I don't hide that by no means whatsoever. It was a very close call, but um, yeah, it was, it was um, it, the field is, I'm trying to find a video of the field now. Oh, this. Okay. So let me screen share this if you guys don't mind. Um, this is the me coming in for a landing. And I was actually hitting. All right, let's forget this. This is the deer that I saw, by the way. This is the greatest part of my entire trip. I know you guys, uh, non hunters, aren't really all that big of a deal, but this right here, this little hole, hides a secret. Look at that big boy run. Woohoo! Oh, man. <laughs> All right, so, oh, crap, I went too far. I mean, back up just a hair. So this is the field. God, that's the and river this, right next to it? Can't. Yeah, the river is up here. That's oh. the river right there. That is the river right there. You can see the river at the top. So my motor's off right now, and I am literally just, just floating. I'm like, um, come on. I'm out of my seat. And I'm like, at some point, at some, uh, dude, look how slow this is. I was just having, it, it must have been some sort of updraft because I got such a lift coming out of this. And it was such a slow landing. Ooh. I mean, dude, that took forever. And then I just ran it out to the trailer or to my camper, which is over here. Oh, that's, well, that wasn't too bad. I thought you were parked on the other end. Yeah, right down there. <laughs> so that's the field. I mean, you can launch left to right, lengthwise, whatever. It's perfect. So. Looks beautiful. I, I, it's, it's you know, I can't, I can't get enough of this field, dude. I just am so thrilled with going back. When I found out it was, uh, you know, we had to, a certain amount of number of people were allowed to go or what have you. I was just like, holy crap, I got it. I'm messaging uh, Amy. I'm messaging Dave. And none of them are getting back to me. I'm talking to Mark. I'm like, dude, did you get a hold of him? He's like, no, not yet. I'm like, we got to hurry up. He's like, we're working on it, dude. I'm like, message him again. Because I didn't want, I did not want to miss out on this at all. And at 150 pilots, I think they could do a little bit more than that, in my opinion. Um, oh, yeah. I mean, based on what I just saw there, I've never been there. But, I mean, that looked like a bigger field than uh, uh, Mountain City. Yeah, yeah, Mountain City. I'd say it's twice Water. as wide as Mountain City. Yeah, twice as wide as Mountain City and... Probably every bit as long as their runway that they had at Mountain City. Looking forward to it. And uh, we, so, uh, someone said, I'm sorry, I didn't catch who, I think it was Tony. He was saying or asking, well, don't they have pilot briefings that, you know, warn you not to do stuff like that, you know, like big sharp turns and stuff. Actually, I don't remember. I mean, I remember pilot briefings where they'll say, okay, yeah, we're going to make a left pattern. We're going to make a right pattern, or they want you to stay over on this side. I don't remember it ever being specifically addressed about making sharp turns within the pattern, you know, flying back I know. against the grain. I know at Swanee, I know at Swanee, they were huge on left patterns. You take off over the, you, you take off, you don't fly over the campers. You don't fly over the people, which we're not supposed to do anyways. And then it's a left pattern, and you got to watch out for the helicopter because they got a medevac helicopter. And well, 
when it's time for them to go, you get you you get the hell out of the way because they got a job to do. Um, and they had a meeting every morning, which about the time that we should be we should be launching is when they wanted to have the meeting. That I didn't agree with. Why we couldn't have an eight o'clock or nine o'clock at night meeting about the day, and then you know that to me would have made more sense when we actually can't fly or maybe a one o'clock in the afternoon meeting. Um, I would have agreed with that, but a, like a six o'clock when we're supposed to be laying our wings out, taking off, flying, we're sitting there talking about, you know, whatever. I didn't care for that as much, but a safety meeting is important and I agree with them. I just think they should be done where more people are willing to go uh, one o'clock in the afternoon. What are you doing? You've already eaten lunch. You're not doing anything. You can't fly. That was the perfect time to uh, to go have a meeting and, and talk about what not to do and what, what everybody's doing correctly. Mm-hmm. So um, I will say Swanee was particularly obsessed with having safety meetings, which I completely agree with. I just didn't agree with the time. Um Aaron and I, if you do show up at Dave Purdens, make sure you find me, sir. I'd like to uh, meet you in person. Yeah, I just told him if he shows up, he can uh, fly the trikes. Because um, I think I'll be on my foot line. Yeah, apparently anybody. Yeah, they'll let anybody. The Lears will let anybody fly their stuff. First time at a flying, here you go. Take off. Yep. We won't tell you how to land, but we're going to tell you how to take off. and Never see flown a paramotor before? Sure. Here's the keys. Right. <laughs> I will, hey, I will tell you, JP, what, like a boss, came in, and everyone knows the hill that I almost took out. Well, JP came in the other direction and literally landed that trike. Never flown a trike before. Landed that trike down on the downhill side of that of that ramp of dirt or grass or whatever and landed that thing. I was just like, oh, dude, like a boss, dude. I mean, it was just... I was impressed with with uh, what he did there. We're never flying a trike before, not knowing he never flew flown that wing. He's never flown a trike before, and to have that kind of wing control and everything else to land perfectly on the on that downward side of that hill is pretty impressive. Oh. Yeah, I was watching Mark George uh, his takeoff today. Uh, that was his first trike, wasn't it? His first trike at launch. I mean, I, it was just perfect. Just absolutely perfect. So, I guess anybody can do it. Anybody can do it. That's why I make it look good. <laughs> Eric, no, it's, uh, hey. it's all in the setup. It's It really is. It's all in the setup. Eric, you're taxiing. <clears throat> I'll give you full props, sir. All jokes aside, um, absolutely amazed at your taxi. And I mean, you land the thing, you taxi it, you come down the little road, you turn, go into the grass, land, come, come to the uh, LZ, drop your wing down. And I mean, it, you're, you're, uh, you done did well, sir. You got Thank that you. part figured out for sure. Thank you. But the, every time I drop my wing, and I am not kidding, I would look up and smart car brian was there right in front of me waiting to take off and i'm like oh crap i have to quickly grab my stuff yank it off to the side every time i i don't know what it was and he's just kind of like basically just standing there looking at me waiting it's like sorry <laughs> yeah, it's only it's, it's only a paramotor i mean we're, we'll just hold this until you know you get done exactly turning off your turning off your surround sound speaker system uh, your six GPS coordinates uh, route system. Um, what else you got? Satellite. Um, your 36-inch TV that you got mounted with DVD playing of your own flights. And um, yeah, he, he has no problem waiting on you. Exactly. Randy. Randy oh, also uh, said uh, Jade uh, also uh, on her taxiing with the wing. No, I was I was getting to her. I don't think I wasn't cutting her out of this. Jade is a little badass that you would not. Like she's, you talk to her and you hear her and she sounds like she's so timid on flying, but she's a little badass. She gets in there full throttle, looks at her wings. She's like, yeah, it's all good. I guess now I'll take off. 
and right. she does. She, she um, she is by no means a uh, a rookie in my book. She's she's got some she's got some skills that she hides. I like to say she hides because <laughs> she right. will not. My nerves were better than. You're what? I wish my nerves were telling me I was comfortable because I still don't feel comfortable. Yeah, but you look, I mean, you may not in your, in your gut may not feel comfortable, but you, your flying definitely looks like you're comfortable. Just so you know. Absolutely. Yep. You do awesome up there, Jade. Mm -hmm. Watch all your videos and you got it, girl. You got it. I, I'm going to support you all the way, girl. You got this. Thanks. You do. She's gonna support you like a push-up, bro. <laughs> <laughs> and and you you're talking about uh, Eric's taxi, and and he was a boss all week in the absolute worst conditions, you know, that any of us have flown in. And he has one failure, which I had three. He had one failure in a whole uh -oh. week, just killing it and some jerk went and put it right on their YouTube channel and labeled it Mrs. or sorry, Mr. <laughs> Jade Lear. <laughs> Lord, I apologize. Hey, that was That's hilarious. Uh, did that. Thanks. I Mark. tell you, that oh, guy's got a sense of humor like no other. Hey, let's not take let's not take video of him taxiing for fifteen hundred feet with yeah. a stable wing entire time making 90 degree turns and stuff no hey where's we're the gonna humor catch you in that <laughs> exactly the one failed launch got it post it <laughs> you know <laughs> what though I, I gotta say if it, have you noticed that all of us that hang out if this was anybody else they would leave crying but, <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> but we all take it with a great assault and laugh about it yeah that that's all it's just fun i mean gee whiz Cry at work. Yeah, but Mark, you uh, do they, have a GoPro on every freaking corner that you could possibly put a GoPro on. So, I mean, so y'all be careful. <laughs> <laughs> I know now he's got GoPros mounted on Shane's trailer. He's he's got these things hidden all over the place. He's got something on all of us. He Look, does. I, he's just I, waiting I, for that time. I, I real quick want to say uh, good night, Dave Wolf. Have uh, a good flight in the morning. I will say, Mark comes and he, Mark and I are talking one morning, and he's like, "I got to get different angles. Like, I got, I got to get, you know, this this part of the field and this part of the field with these two cameras." And I look up and I see my trailer. Like, my camper has the forty-five degree nose um, angle nose on it. I'm like, "Wouldn't this work?" And he's like, "Well, that'd be perfect." Now, if I was smart, I'd have been like, "Well, you know, there's." Uh, you know, there's a rental fee to all this, but uh, before I could even say anything, Mark had climbed up there and stuck the GoPros up there. He's like, all right, good. Let's go. Did you drill big holes uh, in your trailer? In your trailer? It permanently no, fixed. No. <laughs> no, you know what he did? And those were the cameras that got my failure. Yeah. Yeah. And he that's came over, to my, he came to, over to my trailer and goes, hey, you got any of them stickums that I can put on the trailer? Those were my stickums. I want my damn stickums back. <laughs> Did, did, did anybody see any good flights or landings of mine on this video? I'm asking you because I don't I, I I don't remember seeing any, but yet yeah, I've but, got the but, best camera angle. Hey, but that's not that's not totally fair because I I took those videos of you, put them together, and then couldn't send them to you because I didn't want to put them in my video if you were going to use them. No. Dude, you oh, should put but, in yours. But I'll try I, and get your failures next time and publish them. Yeah, there was a <laughs> bunch of them. There was a bunch of them. Hey, um, real, real quick. I don't know. Will, maybe you can help me out with this. I downloaded my GoPro video onto my computer, and they're all grainy and jumpy. Is that the yeah. computer or is it the thing? Um, I did buy just. I just bought an external hard drive, a one terabyte. Uh, external hard drive and i'm thinking of trying to download it to that and see if it helps but what the heck would cause that the file hey, size the resolution yeah. or a poor um 
not a fast enough uh, SD card. Yeah, well, you're talking about as he's talking about when he tries to play it back on his computer. Is that right, Shane? And the and the disc yeah. that you got, the hard drive that you got, was it an SSD, like a solid state drive? Because that makes all the difference oh. in the world. But but primary, the biggest thing is going to be your computer. You know how how powerful your computer is, how much memory you got, stuff like that. Are you recording Let in 4K? I don't think so. Hold on. I know exactly. Oh my God. There. And that's here. Let me, let me. For that reason, GoPro also um, creates proxy files for each video. You see the dot LRVs? With, right. Uh, those are the low res version. Now, see, if you look here, I mean, you'll see it's all grainy and jumpy. This is a failed launch, by the way. But see how it's it's just not it's yeah, stopping the, and going. The computer can't keep up with it. So if I added it to my one terabyte uh, external hard drive, it should do better. What kind of hard drive is it? Is it an SSD, like a solid state drive, kind of like what you use to put in the what you put in your GoPro? Hey, uh, cool. I know how he can fix that. If he just moves a little slower, you know, then then he <laughs> will. It won't be jumpy. <laughs> Maybe not tell him that. He'll do it. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. I'm here. I'm here. I hear you. I hear you. All right. So it is a portable drive. Um. Does it make I'm noise? Is it what? Does it make a noise when you plug it in? I don't know. I just took it out of the box. I hadn't even tried it. It's a oh. Seascape. <laughs> or Seascape.com. How big? How big is it? Is it like a pocket size, like a small flip phone, or is it a yeah. larger? Yeah. It's probably yeah, an it's a pocket size. It's a USB 3.0 SS something or another. No, SS1. I don't know. That's the important part. It doesn't say this is SS and it's got the three little prongy things coming out of it. But if I can't, if I can't um, get this video figured out, then I will not have a Moonshiners video. That's no, why I've not put Shane, one out. Shane, check this out. Huh. Once you save right. the video, once you render it, that jumpiness will go uh, away. You can save it as 1080p or whatever you want to save it as, but it's just such a jump? high resolution. Yeah, I know so. Uh, I'm not. I'm not doubting you. I'm. I'm completely naive to this editing shit. And because uh, I use one to share fun, familiar, 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 uh, whatever. Um, I love the program. It's got so many options. I've never even touched half the crap on it. Um, but I just, I, when it comes to computers, dude, I can build an entire house with, for you. No problem. But <laughs> to work a damn computer is just so foreign to me. It's, it's ridiculous. When you saved it, would you have to put a six inch floppy in or the three and a half inch floppy? <laughs> I had to kick out, I had to kick out my, uh, Oregon, or, or Oregon trail. Um, floppy disk and yes. put in my other. Oh my god, I almost forgot. I think Oregon I had trail. that game. Wasn't it, was it five and a quarter inch? Yeah, I think it was five and a quarter, five and a half. Who knows? That was a long time ago. It sure was, dude. That was awesome. You know how many times I've died of dyslexia? What is it? Dyslexia? This? Well, I can't. I can't. What is it? Um, dysteria. Is it? No, it's not hysteria. What is the damn word I'm looking for? Hysteria? Holy crap. Yeah, something, whatever. Well, we got seven minutes left, guys. I, I uh, so my AC is out in my house. My, my, it's 85 degrees in my house. Oh, so no. You guys know. oh no. Wait, now? Right now. Why? Right, as we, my AC broke. Ugh. 
anyways, the guy's coming tomorrow. Um, so after about $1,300 tomorrow, it'll be up and running again. It'll be fine. <sighs> but right now, huh, right now it's not good. We have, um, I have this uh, 8,000 BTU air conditioner in this room working. And I have a 8,000 BTU window unit in my master bedroom. So sleeping is not horrible in our bedroom. This thing is working nonstop and it's, I'm sweating. Okay. My, I'm sweating my pits off. Um, but as soon as I opened that door, I told my wife, I was like, you sure you don't want me to leave the door open? She's got the windows open, fans blowing, like it's horrible. I'm just like ready to go. Mark H says it's uh, diphtheria. Diphtheria, is that the word you're looking for? Who knows? I don't know. I, at the, I'm probably, I'm probably, I would not say I'm tipsy, but I am on the verge of heat stroke. Is that the same thing? <laughs> An Angela I said, uh, delirious. A A Angela yeah. said, Shane, that is hell to live in the 80 some degrees. Eric, book a flight. Funny you say that because actually um, I've been talking with Shane and we actually ordered the parts that Shane needs and, and we're getting them shipped down there. But then all of a sudden a buddy of Shane's that is in the business down there was able to get the parts uh, tomorrow. And uh, yeah. so we just canceled our order with no problem. But uh, um, yeah, we were trying to do everything here to get parts down to him. So, but he's got to yeah, figure no, it out. Eric, be done tomorrow. Yeah, Eric has definitely been a huge help. Um, I I can't thank him enough. Honestly, he was just like, and I. So I had a friend of mine help me find a guy here, and the guy doesn't really seem to want to get things rolling. So I talked to Eric. Eric's like, oh, I got one of these. I can have it shipped in three to five days. I'm like, three to five days. Okay, cool. And uh, and then I just, for some reason, I thought of my friend um, today, and he actually messaged me on Facebook. He's like, hey, I saw your post on Facebook asking about an AC guy. Did you get that taken care of? I was like, no. He's like, what do you need? And I told him, and I sent him the model number, and it's like, I got one in the shop. I'll be there tomorrow. I was like, tomorrow? Okay. So I called Eric, had him cancel the order, and oh, thank God. Tomorrow, I'm looking back to 72 degrees in my house and 64 in my bedroom. I can't wait. Yeah. Good Lord. I work, I work outside, dude, so coming home. To it being 84, 85 in my house is just this is this is not right. It's yeah. not right. Eric Angela says you're a fairy. I I saw I saw that. I had to uh -huh. tell her, can we please leave the fairy part of it out? Thank you. Uh, <laughs> I I would have added the godfather, but you just left <laughs> just a fairy. And my uh. <laughs> All right, you get in the coolness i i i can totally relate because we had no power from wednesday at four o'clock till saturday afternoon why but, uh saturday morning i took off for the north country to hang out with my son so i had to get the heck out of the house and just do something for you know a couple days so yeah why no power? Why no power? Uh, from the storm, the storms that we had on Wednesday came through a microburst and just, just that quick, just knocked the power out. It was done. Oh. It wasn't even the lights and flicker. It just, I was on the computer doing my thing, and then this wind gust came through, and that was it. And the power was down. There were, I mean, pretty much the whole area, all over surrounding us, nobody had power. What? Because I got. Yeah, it was horrible. It was horrible. Yeah. Hey, and, Linda, uh, you know what I'm going to worry about tonight? 
Brenda, you know what we don't have to worry about tonight? It's so hot here. Krista doesn't have to worry about no microburst for me tonight. Don't worry about it. Well, well, at least you guys are staying somewhat cool because when the power went out, Fair. we had nothing. There was nothing. nothing. How hot was it there? How hot was it at your at, at there, Linda? How hot was it? Uh, when it's, the power went out in my yeah. parents' house. Uh, oh, seriously. And I was upstairs, you know, my room upstairs. So you figure it had to be 85, 90 easily. Um, yeah, the humi because even if you, when you had the windows open, the humidity was so bad. I could not wait. Like I said, Saturday morning, my friend picked me up and we headed out to Petoskey. And uh, yeah, it was, it was bad. It was bad. I couldn't wait to get out. When of I house. came home, when I came home today, it was ninety three inside the house. It's right now. It's eighty four. It's ten yep. o'clock at night. So it this got hotter. <laughs> it got hotter. Yeah. At least you got power. I mean, you got somewhat AC, but I didn't. We didn't have oh. nothing here. My my mom and dad, my mom and dad's from Wednesday. So say, hey, Linda, you could buy one of those new Ford trucks that you just plug an extension cord in the back of the truck and you can mm -hmm. you can power up the the sears tower oh yeah. my goodness and you don't have to worry about having a bow tie as a fairy godfather on your <laughs> truck exactly oh, Lord. no it was if we got halfway up to north to the northern country petoskey gaylord michigan whatever um you could just like put the windows down kind of thing you know and it was so nice and cool and yeah it was a good weekend eric we went to uh i went to mackinac island oh yeah uh, for the day you guys gotta do that it was so fun well i know the there's an and... airport there's an airport over there i wouldn't mind taking off from mainland and flying over there oh I my gosh these, i have these crazy ideas things i want to do nobody's no, in with me you. though i don't get it not you eric no you no not you with crazy ideas just no. like down in uh, down in uh, Outer Banks, we could go from one island to the next, and it's very shallow in between. You know, uh, my sis is like she did. She's doing a road trip right now in Munsing, Michigan, off of Lake Superior. Were you guys close? To, were you Were you guys close to that when you uh, didn't you Didn't I see something on Facebook that you were by Lake Superior or something? Um, when was this? Oh, in Michigan? Yeah. Yeah, we were over by Torch Lake, kind of the, wait, hold on, DP will be proud of me. It, we were in the upper lower. Upper lower? <laughs> <laughs> oh, my so, God. Uh, yeah, we were wanna, in the upper lower, wanna, up more on the west. Okay. I do want to go, I want to check out Muncie, Michigan one of these times because it's right off. Lake oh, that's Superior, in the UP. and it's beautiful. The water yeah, is like crystal. That's the, that's the upper upper. That's in the UP. Okay, that's yeah, where the painted she, rocks are. Okay, she had to. Yeah, they drove. Uh, they drove uh, across the Mackinac Bridge to get to it. So yeah. Yep. Yeah. It was hey guys, there. we're at, we are after ten o'clock. Um, okay. You guys want to do a? Do we want to do an after show and hang out, or get um, right done? When DP asked. What, DP wanted to ask some questions. Yeah, DP oh, has okay. some questions. Well, I mean, I was looking for somebody more important, but DP, sure, go ahead. <laughs> <laughs> on the after show. Oh, on the after show. Yeah. Okay, let me let me real quick go back and find. Um, can um, Will? Can you drop in the uh, user or the username in chat, and then I will end the live stream as soon as I see it in there and then you guys can jump in. Um, again, thank you guys tonight for showing up and having a good time with us, hanging out, drinking beer. If you weren't drinking beer, you're probably just eating dinner late at night like Will. And uh, it's all good, man. I Again, thank you guys for hanging out with us, shooting the BS and, and having a good time. If you didn't have a good time, 
well, there's always other shows. Um, we're just trying to have fun. <laughs> so, That's right. Um, there's the user or the password, username, all that good stuff in the chat. I'm going to go ahead and end the recording, which is right now.